The second wave of the Treasure Hunters event just went live with brand new rules. Are you aware of them? Here's everything you need to know. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. The Treasure Hunter Mole Miners are back to the wasteland, but there's plenty of changes while compared to the very first time this community event went live. Bethesda has changed some of the core rules, such as creating an exclusive reward pool for the event, expanding the possible spawn locations, and even changing the empty pill prices at vendors. Let me show you all the official changes as well as some others I found while testing things out. Let's start! I'm sure you have noticed this by now, if not, well, let me break it to you. Treasure hunters can now spawn anywhere in the map, as in any marked location at least. The first event only allowed hunters to spawn in the Ash Heap region, but now they can spawn in all the map regions. There is only one restriction here. Treasure hunters cannot spawn inside instanced areas, basically any location with a loading screen, if that makes sense. There are some locations that might feel instance like the Garaham estate, but they are not. Locations with a direct connection to the rest of the world can spawn hunters, so don't get confused. Anyway, you now have dozens and dozens of choices to farm hunters. You are no longer restricted to the Ash Eep region, and that is liberating indeed. Empty pails used to be quite expensive, so expensive that you could only purchase 7 empty ornate pails per character if you had 30,000 caps, of course. Now, after update 23, things changed a lot, but as they reduced the empty pail prices by around 50%, as you can see, the new prices are a bit more accessible. These are the prices with rank 3 hard bargain active, by the way. With such values, you can now get around 15 empty ornate pills per character with max caps, which is more than double than before. So that was definitely a positive change for players. We can now craft more pills and roll more rewards with the same amount of caps. Very good, or should I say, going to buy. Well, with update 23, there was another change that got my attention, but as they made empty pills untradeable. Before the patch, players were accessing new rewards already by using empty pills from the previous event or even by duplicating them, since, well, they couldn't get any more empty pills at the time. So this change came to ensure cheaters can't duplicate empty pills anymore, so this is not necessarily a bad change in my opinion. As for the chest pills, they are the same as before, you cannot drop, trade or sell them either, so let's hope cheaters won't find a way around this. Alright, as you may be new already, the Treasure Hunter Rewards Pool was shared with the Holiday Scorched, and then the rare rewards were in a different branch. As such, we could basically roll anything that drops from Holiday Scorch before, except for the rare rewards, which was individual for each event. I know, it's a bit confusing, and that's most likely why Bethesda changed the system and now each community event has its own unique and exclusive reward pool. All the rare rewards for the Treasure Hunter event are now exclusive and you cannot get them from any other event or activity in game. But hold on, there's more changes related to this decision as you are about to see. According to Bethesda, the Mole Miner Treasure Hunters now have an increased chance to drop the high-quality Ornate Pills, but is this really true? Well, if it is, then the change was minimal, at least on my end. I have killed around 100 hunters so far, and only 5 to 7 dropped an ornate pill, all the rest dropped low or medium quality pills. So in my experience, if they did increase the chance, it was like 1% or something, you will not really notice while playing. Furthermore, but as the said, Dusty Pills now have an increased chance to drop unique rewards, but again, I can confirm this. I got some rare rewards already, but they were mostly from crafted 
ornate pails and very few from medium pails. I can't even remember getting anything unique from dusty pails yet, for example, and I opened like 50 of them already, so they basically drop 8 items and junk like before. The increase here is most likely very, very little as well. It's hardly noticeable. Maybe you guys noticed something. I surely didn't. Well, this one is quite obvious, but it's still a change, so I decided to add it here. Treasure Hunters now scale to your level with the One Wasteland system. They still don't attack back, they just stare at you or run away, as usual, and as predicted, they take a little longer to die than before, since their HP and defenses scale depending on their level. Anyway, the loot is slightly different now. For starters, they seem to often drop cans, which can be scrapped into steel and lead, so that's amazing. Secondly, the legendary items dropped are also scaled to their level, so no more low-level legendaries if you are high level. I've managed to get some decent drops already, like this vampire explosive rifle a level 50, so farming hunters is now farming legendary items beyond script, which can be worth a lot of caps as well. Isn't that convenient? I really like it. What about rewards? What has changed? Well, there are 10 new rewards to collect with the second wave of the event. Here's the list with all the 10 new items which were added to the Treasure Hunter's unique reward pool. I am also leaving the link below the video in case you want to check the entire cheat with all the old and new rewards and the respective chances to roll them. It was made by data miners, so the information there is very reliable. Now, just to make a quick overview, the new rewards include mostly cosmetics, outfits, and a mask. There is a new weapon skin and some decor items for your camp as well. I will make a video with all of them to show you guys in great detail how they look like and so on. Now, let's proceed. How difficult is it to get new rewards though? Well, if you're lucky enough, it's quite easy of course, but if you are not so lucky, then you will have to farm as much as you can to get what you want, because, well, the drop percentages for each unique item are very, very low. In fact, the highest drop rate you can get is a bit over 3% from a crafted ornate peel. The looted ones give you around 2% chance though. Yep. As I said, the chances are very, very low, and crafted pails will always have a slightly better chance to drop stuff than the looted ones. If you move to the median pails, the chances are 2% for crafted pails and 1% for looted ones. And lastly, for the dusty pails, the chances are below 1%, so it's very, very rare to get something you really want from dusty pails. Again, the sheet is below the video with all these details. If you wish to check it out, just go ahead and, well, check the numbers, percentages, and so on. What about all unique rewards? Did something change there? Yes and no. For instance, the circus cage now has a higher chance to drop than all the other rare rewards for some reason, probably because it was so rare last time and most people wanted to roll it, so this is Bethesda's redemption, I guess. Moving forward, the drop rate for all the rare rewards except the circus cage old and new ones are the exact same now, so in theory you have the same chances to roll any rare item in the pool, but we know the power of randomness, you usually end up getting what you already got and never get the things you're missing and hoping to roll next. Oh well, that's life, isn't it? Now, let's move on to facts I discovered while farming a mole miner treasure hunter since the second wave started. They seem to spawn more in towns or in highly populated areas, and I don't mean just more often. For example, in Morgantown, they seem to spawn very often, yes, but they also spawn in numbers. I usually come across two or four per run. I know the place is huge, but still, it spares me from checking a lot of other locations. I mean, you 
usually get one per plate and that's it. The same happens to me at the Morgantown Airport and at Bolton Greens. I usually come across two or three of them at once. So there's quite a few locations that are really great to farm them, but they are all towns or as I said, highly populated areas. So that cannot be a coincidence. I don't think so. Well, the treasure hunters can indeed spawn all over the map now, but that doesn't mean the old farming locations in the Ash Eep region no longer works. On the contrary, they work very well still. I farmed some dozens of them at Welsh, Lewisburg and Beckley, for example. As such, I can confirm my previous farming guide in this region is still working. So if you guys have no idea where to go or what locations are often spawning treasure hunters, feel free to check my previous previous farming guide for this event. I'm working on a new one, but time is of the essence and this event is only lasting a few days, so I'm not sure I will be able to make it in time since I'm still testing and I don't like to rush things or put content out there, which is quite wrong to say the least. Okay, this point is a reminder helping hand because crafting perks do not affect the process of crafting pills. This was live in the first event and nothing has changed in this regard. Super duper, chemist and even the traveling pharmacy perks do not affect the mole miner pills in any way. So no use in equipping the first two perks before crafting because they do not work. So it's a waste of time to swap perks in hopes maybe one of them will eventually trigger, they will not. Something else a lot of people don't know or forgot about it already is the effects audio option, which can drastically boost the sound of mole miner treasure hunters. You don't have to check an entire location or kill all the enemies around to find the hunter. All you have to do is listen and detect their sound. If it's there, then all you have to do is run towards the sound until you find the hunter. But for that to happen, you need to hear it first, right? So make sure to boost your effects effects option to boost the audio and find hunters quicker and with less effort. Too bad we can't listen to music while farming them. Uh, that really bothers me, but what can you do? Now, let's move into matters you won't find anywhere in the official records. So, first of all, treasure hunters can bug a lot. Yesterday, I came across three different bugs or issues that can drastically affect your farming. First of all, it seems like other NPCs can kill the treasure hunters if you take too long to get to them. I came across a few bodies unlooted and their loot can bug out like this. You will see the looted items in their true form out in the environment just like this so keep an eye for huge chests on the floor because you can pick them up at least so that's great to know secondly the hunter bodies can go through the floor which makes the looting process very difficult or even impossible in this case i was able to detect the body by crouching and slowly inspecting the stairs. I was lucky, I guess, but sometimes they just vanish. They fall deep inside the map and there's nothing you can do to pick the loot. Lastly, and the most concerning bug is when hunters become white named and vats will not target them. So when this happens, you really need to hear their sound else you will most likely never find them since you cannot select them with vats and you know, they usually run away. So these were the main three issues I found with the hunters so far. I hope it helps you in any way possible. Lastly, the second wave of the Treasure Hunter event is only lasting a few days. It's over on October 19, so you don't have a lot of time to farm. However, the event is returning two more times before the end of the year with the same exact rules and rewards, which means you will have plenty of time to get everything you want, new or even old ones. The Hunters are returning twice in November in the first week and then in the last week as well. So don't stress yourself right now, you will get plenty of chances to farm in the upcoming weeks. As such, don't you worry, be happy, I guess. 
Alright, that's my 15 facts and changes for the return of the treasure hunters. I hope you got to learn something new with this one. I am currently working on a new farming guide as well as a video to display all the new rewards you can get from the hunters. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I am Marta Branco. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. You can also support me even further if you wish. The links are always below. Now, I wish you a happy farming and I will see you very, very soon in the next one. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.